I'd like to uh, call to order this meeting of the Waitley Select Board. Um, sorry if it looks like I'm looking off in the distance. My agenda is over on the other screen here. Um, there really our only item on the agenda tonight is the tax classification public hearing and then subsequent discussion and vote. Uh, what I would like to do is open the hearing first. Um, and I think to do that officially, I need Brian to read the notice. Um, yep. And then uh, I understand Brian has a PowerPoint to kind of give us an overview on what uh, what options are possible, because the state actually does restrict a lot of what we can do on this. Um, and then uh, open up uh, the get input from the folks who've come, uh, both on Zoom and in, in real person. Does that um, make sense? Okay, so let me get uh, turn over to Brian now to uh, read the notice. Uh, Town of Whitley, Massachusetts, notice of tax classification public hearing. The Whitley Select Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, November 21st, 2022 at 6 p.m. at the Town Offices for Sandy Lane, Whitley, Mass. On the issue of tax classification for fiscal year 2023, the purpose of the hearing is to allow taxpayers the opportunity to present their views on whether residential, commercial, industrial, open space, and personal property should be taxed with one rate for all property classes or to use different tax rates for different property classes. All taxpayers are encouraged to attend either in person or via Zoom to present their views orally or submit them in writing to the select board. Join Zoom meeting by computer. There's a link and then join Zoom meeting by telephone. There are two toll-free numbers and meeting ID and passcode. <clears throat> okay, uh, very good. Um, then let me keep it over with Brian. Um, if you'll share the screen and I guess everybody else can see it up on the big screen there. Motion to open the public hearing. You can, sure. Oh. Motion to open the public hearing. I'll second. Okay, great. Um, all of those in favor, Julie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. All right, tax classification hearing. Uh, we can talk about um, what the board is going to deal with tonight. So background, every fiscal year before the tax rate is set, select board must hold a public hearing to consider tax rate options available to the town. The hearing is held after the assessors have determined final values and classified all properties and reported this information to the Department of Revenue, which has been done. The select board received notice on November 1st that the values have been certified for the town. Um, the select board conducts a classification hearing and then votes on available tax rate options. So there's essentially four questions that the, the select board is going to answer tonight or whenever it needs to be answered soon um, after the public after the close of the public hearing. Um, so the Commonwealth provides several options for how municipalities may distribute the tax levy among taxpayers. It's important to note that the total tax levy remains the same. The select board is making decisions on how it's spread amongst the various taxpayers in the town. Uh, the current estimate for the FY23 uh, tax levy is $4,706,918. So there's really four decisions that the select board needs to make. One is, a, is whether the town will have a single or split tax rate, whether there will be an open space discount, whether there will be a residential exemption, and the last one is a small commercial exemption. And we'll, I'll talk about those in a little bit more detail. So a single or split tax rate, um, the select board must decide the percentage of the tax levy that each of the classes of uh, real property and personal property have. So the different classifications of property are residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal property. Um, and to do so, the select board must adopt a residential factor, and that governs the percentage of the tax that will be paid by each of those different classes of property. Uh, the amount of the shift that can be shifted amongst the, uh, the different classes of property um, is no less than what's called the minimum residential factor for Waitley. That's calculated by the Department of Revenue as 1.5. Um, 
So the adoption of a residential factor of one results in the taxation of all property at the same tax rate, what we know as a single tax rate. Um, that's a, a uniform tax rate or a single tax rate where each of those classifications pays the same amount. Um, the adoption of a residential factor less than one reduces the share of the taxes paid by the residential and open space classes and increases the share paid by the commercial, industrial, and personal property classes. Um, the opposite is true if the, the residential factor was greater than one, you could actually shift more of the tax burden onto the residential and open space and less on the commercial, industrial, and personal property classes. Open space discount. So this is the second question that the select board needs to answer. Um, select board may allow for a discount for all class two open space properties. We won't get too much into this. The third bullet, uh, fourth bullet down says, according to the LA4 submitted by the assessors, Whitley does not classify open space properties as class two open space. So this discount is not applicable and not many towns in the Commonwealth actually classify property in this way, open space in this way. Um, so it's really not applicable to the town. Um, if it was to be applicable in a future fiscal year, we'd have to have conversations with the assessors about reclassifying those properties. Um, next one, the res residential exemption. Um, so I put my grant of residential exemption to all class one residential properties of the principal residence of the taxpayer. So it's property where, where the home, where the taxpayer lives or is domiciled. Um, so how this works is that um, the assessed valuation of, of each eligible parcel um, is reduced by a calculated amount. The select board would, would adopt a percentage um, for the exemption, um, and it would, it would reduce the, the taxable assessed value for that property. But at the same time, it would increase, um, it would increase the tax payment of non-eligible residential property. So this is common. It's common on, on the Cape and it's common um, in places where there's a lot of, and along the coast, where there's a lot of vacation homes, mm. uh, high value vacation homes. Um, yeah. And the, the town shift the burden, you know, over to those homes. Can I throw in a quick question here? Yep. I, I, I think you said that it was a percent of the value not a constant value. And so you can't say the first hundred thousand dollars of your home value is uh, exempt and then whatever's above it, you have to do it as a percent. I believe that's true, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's kind of an example of the state is really setting the parameters for us. There's only a few parameters in here that we have control over. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. It's calculated the same way that small uh, small scale commercial exemption is, is calculated, which we'll cover next. Okay, thanks. There's not much that can be done in terms of the range of, of the, the different amounts. Yeah. Um, and the residential exemption only affects um, residential and open space properties. It doesn't impact the tax rate of commercial, industrial, or personal properties. Small commercial exemption. And this is the this is the fourth and final decision the select board will have to make. Um, select board may grant a small commercial exemption to all class three commercial properties. And there's two factors that have to be met here. One is it needs to be occupied by businesses with an average annual employment of no more than 10 people. And it needs to be on a property with an assessed valuation of less than 1 million. Um, and it, it's really calculated the same way as the as the residential exemption where it's a, a certain percentage um, of the assessed value of an eligible parcel um, can be exempt from taxation. And again, similar to the residential exemption, it doesn't affect uh, the CIP grouping. The small commercial exemption doesn't affect the RO grouping of properties. So, so the, state, the state really separates residential open space properties from commercial, industrial, personal properties in terms of how these tax policy decisions are made. Brian, I have a quick question. Yep. What is a class three commercial property? Um, so they each have, it's just a number, that's a numerical code that they use for um, 
it's a land use code for commercial property. Oh, okay. so one hundred is our specific type of commercial property, like there's class two commercial property. Uh, class so class two is open space, class one is residential, I class see. four is industrial. Class three doesn't separate out among commercial. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So those are the those are the questions that the select board um, is going to uh, accept input on. Um, so let's talk about a single or split tax rate. Um, so the town submits um, its choices through something called gateways. It's a, it's a you know, it's a computer program that's run by the Department of Revenue. Um, and it provides a tool where the town can input um, different splits in the tax rate in terms of the percentage that would be shifted one way or the other from residential open space to commercial, industrial, or personal, or it could also go the other way. Um, and so this is just showing what, well, um, what we would show as a 20% split um, in this chart that nobody can read. Um, and I can put it up after when we, if we get into discussion about it. Um, so for each shift, there's a different change in the tax rates that would be paid by each classification of property. So what we're showing here is a hypothetical 20% shift. Um, so each level of the shift, um, the residential open space, uh, pays less and the commercial industrial personal would pay more. Um, if there were to be a split tax rate, a decision would be would need to be made as to what the percentage of the split would be. And depending on the percentage of the split it is the increase or decrease in the tax rate paid by that class. And this is just showing up a 20% split, 20% um, shift, sorry. Um, and this is showing it this is showing what would happen um, in terms of residential and open space properties. There's assessed values, hypothetical assessed values here. 364,000 is the average single family house in Waitley at four um, fiscal year 22. So there would be, if, if there were a 20% shift um, in favor of the residential open space, the savings to the average single family house would be $265 per year. Um, and obviously it's going to increase as the assessed values increase. Uh, but as you would expect, there's also going to be an increase to uh, commercial, industrial, and personal property classifications. Um, so for, let's just take uh, 300000 there would be an increase in the tax bill, annual tax bill for commercial, industrial, or personal property of $855 if there was a 20% shift. Um, so in this, this chart here shows the various tax rates and we can look at it on the, uh, up there if we need to. Um, it's the one that's really hard to read. Um, but there's different tax rates depending on what the shift is. I have a second question. Yep. Um, on the residential, we've got the the average single family assessed value. Is there any average for the commercial industrial property value? Um, that's not something that's calculated by DLS. Okay. I'm sure we could go back and calculate it and have that up all the okay. yeah. all the properties that. listing on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how meaningful that would be, right? Because like, there's Yankee Candle, <laughs> and then there's yeah. you know a, a small you know two three person business. That uh, an average might not be very meaningful here. Much smaller sample size with much bigger variation. In yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so these are these are arguments that that came out of the there was a, a tax rate working group last fiscal year, and these are the arguments that came out of that um, considerations to support a single tax rate. Uh, Waitley has always had a single tax rate. Fairness: everyone pays the same rate per valuation. Um, a split rate charging CIP properties more is anti-business and may encourage businesses to leave town or not come to town. Um, there's an additional administrative work for assessors and tax collector. 
Um, this is more of a, a, a fact. 15 municipalities in Western Mass have split tax rate, six cities in nine pounds in fiscal year 2022. Uh, the benefit to residential taxpayers is not sufficient to justify the burden on CIP taxpayers. And uh, local businesses may provide employment opportunities for residents. Those are ones that came up last year. Um, considerations to support a split tax rate. Property tax is regressive, um, i.e. large multinational corporations pay the same rate as property owners with low or fixed income. Lowering the residential tax rate makes Whitley more competitive on the residential real estate market. Um, due to the five-year revaluation in fiscal year 22, most residential properties increased in assessed value at a greater percent than larger CIP properties, um, which had the result of CIP properties paying less taxes in fiscal year 22 compared to the previous year due to the large increase in total residential assessed values. That was a mouthful. And the decision is reviewable every year as we're sitting here again. Um, so in terms of the open space discount, I mentioned that we, we uh, would not be eligible for that this year um, because we don't classify property in that manner. Um, residential exemption, this one we're not really clear on. Um, what we see now is that the number of parcels that would um, not qualify for this exemption is quite low. Um, you know, when we look through the listing of properties, we only see a listing for two apartments in Waitley. Um, it's likely that there are more rental units in town, but we don't, I don't think the assess, or at least we haven't gotten any solid information from the assessors as to how many of those are. Um, and it worked, in Waitley's not a community that has an abundance of um, very expensive vacation homes. Small commercial exemption. Um, again, it's a two-factor test to qualify. Um, it's less than 10 employees and it's less, it's an evaluation of less than a million. The assessors list 50 commercial properties, 15 industrial properties, and 49 personal property accounts for a total of um, 114 CIP properties. Um, so we don't, we weren't given a, a current list of the employers with uh, uh, businesses with 10 or less employees. We definitely need to get that uh, if this exemption was, was selected by the board. If we use the old list from 2018, we can estimate that approximately five out of the 50 commercial part, uh, properties would qualify for the exemption and the remaining 45 probably wouldn't. Um, the one catch here is that um, it's possible that additional commercial properties could qualify uh, when if they're owned by a sole, in a sole proprietorship or partnership, because there's not necessarily a filing that would happen with the state if it's owned by somebody in their individual capacity, but it's also as a commercial uh, use code. So that number could go up um, by how much it's at, at that point. Um, it's hard to tell. We would have, I think we would have a pretty good idea after the, you know, the, the first year, because it would be on an application basis. Um, but that's the information that we have now. And I'll be quiet. <laughs> and I, I just want to mention, uh, we did receive uh, two written comments and um, a note from the assessors with their recommendation. So once we open it up, we may want to just read those first and get those into the record. Okay. Um, um, Fred and Julie, do you have any other questions about what Brian just presented? Not at the moment. No, I just want to clarify with the uh, residential exemption. It is essentially irrelevant to us. With I mean, it's aimed at, as Brian said, uh, vacation properties, but mainly apartment buildings, which we don't have. Yeah. And it would probably cause more trouble than for the assessors than tax collectors. Yeah. Than yeah, even so, with what rental properties we have, <laughs> I mean, that if you raise the relative tax rate on people who are renting a property that they don't live in, um, that's just going to raise the rent. <laughs> you know, um, that's a, so. I, I don't. I, I guess uh, I, I agree. It's it's a lot of work for a small difference, but it's ultimately going to come down to. Um, it would be good to have more information about how many 
properties we have that are not owner occupied. So I wonder if that's something the assessors can um, can find out somehow. But because uh, I always think more information is better. But uh, that I agree with Fred about that. That that's probably not um, not a fruitful way to go. Um, well, I would be ready to hear from the uh, the folks who came to the public hearing to tell us what they think. Um, let me see, how shall I go about this? Um, okay, Amy, read, read the written ones first. Why don't you do the written ones first? Okay, I have a letter from James Roth. Dear members of the Waitley Select Board, the town of Waitley needs to encourage more commercial and industrial growth as it has jobs, excise taxes, and property taxes without the burden of services placed on the town by residents and families. Splitting the tax rates and charging more for commercial and industrial is not the way to encourage growth and raise more revenue for the town. Splitting the tax rates is also discriminatory because it rewards small businesses with a residential tax rate for home-based businesses and penalizes small businesses that operate in the commercial or industrial zone. Small businesses make up 99.5% of all businesses in Massachusetts and make up 45.7% of all employment. We as a town need to do as much as we can to keep the businesses that we have and encourage new businesses to come to town. Thank you for considering my opinion, James D. Ross, President JDR Builders. And then he included some charts um, and statistics statewide regarding commercial property and employment. Uh, there is a public comment from Van Dennehy. In my opinion, Waitley residents have always partnered with the local town businesses by having a single tax rate. From Tom's Hot Dogs providing part-time jobs for our kids to Povestro providing career employment enabling the raising of a family. Most of the businesses are still recovering from a once in a generation pandemic to say nothing of inflation decimating profits. I urge the select board to maintain a single property tax rate. Thank you for your time, Dan Dennehy. And then there's one email from the uh, Fred Orlowski from the assessors. The Board of Assessors recommends the town adopt a uniform tax rate and do not recommend to adopt an open space discount, a residential exemption, and a small commercial exemption. Fred Orlowski, Chair, Board of Assessors. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, um, I was just thinking we've got probably people who are joined here on Zoom who might like to speak and we've got people in the room, but I would say I'd give the people in the room the first chance, but since I'm not in the room, um, could I let Fred direct traffic up there? Okay, actually, if I can interrupt, I think I'd like to hear from Fred Olaski and the assessors first. Since they're supposed to, oh, that I think that's a that's a good Zoom. idea. I see Fred. Is, are there members of the assessors there in the room? Uh, no. Yes, no. yes, uh, we have uh, uh, Kathleen Grady, one of our assessors, and I don't know if uh, our assistant assessor Cynthia Herbert is on. Yeah, I don't see anyone named Kathy on the. Uh, well, it says the iPad. She's on her iPad. Okay. She's, She's waving to you now. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. At this point, I can't see her, but that's okay. Uh, I, I'm sure she's there and I just can't see her. Um, yeah, so assessors, weigh in, please. Okay. Uh, looking at the, at the properties in, in town and, and what would be the numbers and uh, percent of, of property tax paid by commercial, industrial, and personal property versus residential in open space is roughly an 80-20 split. 80% 80 of property taxes come from residential, 20% from, from the other category, commercial, industrial, and personal property. Uh, that's typical of many communities that have a split tax rate. That's one of the common elements you will, you will see on the, the Department of Revenue site. Those that have a split tax rate have more commercial property 
than than Whateley does, higher percentage. Uh, the other thing I like to mention, uh, last year we had a five-year reevaluation. The commercial industrial properties increased to roughly the same percent as, as residential. I know Brian gave a, a, a statement here earlier that residential increased quite a bit more. That was not true. They're both roughly, my calculations, 12 and a half percent. Last year, they both increased the same. What's happening this year, based on information that we submitted and the state has put together and tables, the residential has only increased by 0.5%. And the uh, commercial industrial is, well, they do ind individually uh, 14%. So the commercial industrial has, has increased more than residential this year. And one reason for that is, well, I'm not sure it's because we have more, more commercial properties, more businesses, but, but the, other, the other factor in that is this year, the Board of Assessors hired a tax consultant to help us assess personal property taxes. On, on mostly large businesses and, and, and majority of other businesses. And that's what contributed to some of this large increase. So commercial properties are paying, gonna pay more. If we have a single rate, they're gonna pay a bigger increase than residential because their, their assessed values increased. Uh, we were kind of mandated by the state to do that kind of assessment especially for the utility companies. We have two major utility companies. Their values did increase as well as others. We did look at other major commercial properties in town uh, with this consultant to help us get a better assessed value, uh, which proved useful. That's why the increase was over at was 14%. So we're feeling that the the uh, commercial properties are paying their fair share. They're keeping up with, with the assessed values in town. And the 80-20 the split that I mentioned earlier is, is, is really typical of communities that have a single tax rate. The other thing I think Brian mentioned reasons why not to split. Well, you know, we have some properties in town that we're looking for commercial development. We've had one on State Road that's been there for a while. It's all, it's, uh, uh, and also we're looking at some in the center of town. If we have an increase in commercial commercial tax rate, it kind of goes against trying to get more businesses in town, in, into Whateley. Uh, surrounding towns on, let's say the Route 5 corridor, you can start in Northampton and go to Greenfield none of them have a split tax rate. If you looked in today's newspaper, Greenfield just voted for a single tax rate for all, all properties. Uh, so if we're to compete with surrounding communities on say the Route 5 commercial industrial corridor, we need to, uh, I guess, be receptive to commercial properties to make sure that their interests in Waitley as well as Deerfield and other communities. Uh, And also, you know, we're looking at, and I think Hannah may share more insight on this on, on the uh, exit 35 uh, corridor, uh, Interstate 91 exit 35 business corridor, uh, looking at a consultant study to see how we can attract more commercial businesses to that property. Uh, and also in I think 2018, the, the town did a economic development study with the help of uh, Franklin County Regional Council of Governments that identified corridors, identified locations for more commercial property. So we've got an interest, the town has an interest in attracting more commercial properties based on these studies, based on what we're seeing in surrounding communities. And we just don't think by increasing taxes in Waitley, which would be the only one in, in the area, uh, is going to benefit us. It's going to be an attraction to more more businesses. Okay. Uh, I guess I'd like to, or I can I 
I conclude, ask uh, Kathleen if she has anything she wants to say. She's one of our assessors here, and I don't know if Cynthia is on. Kathleen, you have to mute, uh, get your unmute if you You're want muted, to Kathleen. say something. I still don't hear you. Muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. I completely concur with Fred. I, I think it would be like shooting ourselves in the foot. You know, we really want commercial properties and we're not going to get them. If they can cross the street and, and go into South Deerfield and, and set up shop, I, I'm just not sure it's the right thing to do at this time. Uh, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Is uh, Cynthia on? Right? Is Melanie the... there? Is Cynthia Herbert on? No. 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 Okay. Okay, I guess maybe she had a another conflict or something. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, it sounds like that's all the assessors we have. Um, I, I, I've got a question for Fred. We got a note. Brian got a note from you saying that the assessors uh, are in favor of a single tax rate. Yes. At what meeting was that discussed and resolved? one last week we met last week yeah you have minutes of that meeting or was that meeting noticed i have to ask cynthia she was uh, in charge of the meeting so i can't say right now and was there any do you know of any minutes that were posted or well or uh, the minutes wouldn't be posted yet but uh notice of that meeting Cynthia only works two days a week, and I don't know what she does in the, the off days. And and this week she's not there until uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. What day was it? We can ask her. You know. I don't see it posted. I don't see it posted. Okay. Every we have meetings on Tuesday, though it's not posted. I mean, it's not. But presumably, if it's a public meeting, then you need to post it 48 oh. hours in advance and put up a Zoom link so that members of the public can join and hear what you have to say. So I think that's what we're referring and to. And afterwards, post minutes. I don't know. I, I have to ask Cynthia. be doing this for all our meetings? I don't understand. Shouldn't be doing it for all your meetings. Yeah, for meetings of the board of assessors, those are those are supposed to be publicly posted meetings. Is my understanding? Okay, uh, we we uh, decided and voted on to have our, our assistant assessor act for us on on many many activities. And if it's something needed decision making, yes, we did post prior meetings and did vote and there was minutes taken uh we don't do that at every meeting some of the stuff is mm. not necessary yeah it's it's well i i know that i can't talk to julie or joyce about anything <laughs> concerning <laughs> anything we talk about outside of a public a, outside of a public meeting yeah. and the assessors live yeah. cool. by the same open meeting law and there should be records of any time, I would assume aside from a property visit, when you're supposed to, I assume, look at the property and not talk about it, that any time you talk about substantive matters, it should be noticed and minuted. There, so every time I go, go in and I sign abatements and things like that, we're supposed to if you any discussion between more between on a three person board, two of the members about a substantive matter has to be done on an open meeting. About a sub a sensitive matter, you said. No, a substantive matter. Any oh, any matter that involves a decision of the board or a discussion of the substance of what you're supposed to deal with 
has to be in an open meeting, not a meeting which but, after the fact you say we decided this. That, that, that has been done. That that has been done. We we to, to say that the assessors don't meet in open meetings is 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 a mute point, and I don't think that's a purpose of this public hearing. We we do meet, we do post. Well, no, not, not every time. I'm saying not, I'm saying we don't do that every yeah, time. But the times where it's important, we do that and their minutes have been taken. As far as which First ones of all, I cannot do that time. today. If you we want to know that we time. can get you that information. You're supposed to do it every time. Yeah. And we got a note from you saying the assessors decided this at a meeting that was not there's no technically a valid meeting. There's no record of that. There's meeting. no record of that meeting ever happened. So we're kind of so we don't know how to take making decisions the advice start here without having all of the information yeah. other than the final. Uh, Boy, this apparently is... the last posted agenda was May 13th. Oh, May 3rd. I apologize. Yeah, May 3rd. Hmm. So you meet every two weeks, but we don't have haven't had an agenda for six months. Yeah, it's going to go on and on. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the at this, okay, point, I, I just I just wanted to raise that point. Yeah, because, on and on yeah. and on. I get that. That's one thing. If you want to bring that up of of how the board of assessors works and and operates, the other thing is we're looking at, at we're looking at properties here, tax rates. Yeah, uh, sets values and stuff, and and we we do look at this stuff and pay attention to it, and and that is what I've been discussing here is, is our recommendations. Okay, all right. Your that, recommendations so, are not valid because they right. have not arrived at in an open meeting. Right. So I guess the point might be, can if I can sort of bring this to a close, it's going around a little bit. Yeah. Um, Fred, I understand that you are in favor of having a single tax rate. And I uh, also understand that Kathy also is in favor. She said she agreed with you. That's different from the board of assessors decided because that has to be done in an open meeting with deliberation, with public participation if people want to. So I'm, I, I would say I've heard you and your opinion as an assessor, and I've heard her opinion as an assessor but the point is, you might want to pay better attention to open meeting law on Board of Assessors meetings in the future. I know we can't change the past, but you should do that, okay? Okay, point and, well taken, okay. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I have a couple okay. quick questions, if I may. Sure, go ahead, Julie. Fred, can you or and or Brian explain uh, the discrepancy between your information and Brian's information about uh, the comparison between the residential tax rate and the commercial industrial tax rate? You said that Brian had put out that um, the residential rate went up significantly, and you said that's not true. Um, can you residential assessments? Can you guys address that discrepancy because we only have the information that you are each giving us. Well, I, I I can start, I, and it was uh, last, and this is what I recall from. There was a tax rate working group last year. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, Fred, Paul, and Fred, right? Right. Um, and during the course of that of that working group and, and some of the work that was done. Um, I recall there being a, a, um, a larger increase in total residential assessed value as compared to commercial and industrial properties to the point where, um, larger commercial and industrial properties were actually paying less in taxes mm -hmm. than the previous year. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the document. I've got a sheet which I can okay. put into the record and this we got last year. Oh, and I that's just it. that's a few <laughs> selected just selected properties that is not across the board. Okay. And that's that's what I was referencing. Well, right now I'm looking at a, a table we developed last year called growth and assess values. And that's where I'm, sorry, I'm getting my information that was. Twelve and a half percent, roughly, for each each two groups, residential and commercial. 
I'm sure you have that table. I don't, don't know the the uh, that came from the LA four values. We have the LA four values for, for this year. I, I and I'm just going by what's on their their sheet there, 13, 14 percent. Melanie from the assessors, Welcome. Okay. Um, Joyce, do you want me to? Yeah, why don't we go to the, the people who've been very patiently waiting there? Uh, and if you, as vice chair, would direct traffic on that end. Uh, and then after that, we'll go to the folks who are on Zoom who may be wanting to chime in as well. May I just say one thing? If you're on Zoom, you are muted. If you want to make a comment, just hit the little raise your hand emoji and we will call on you. If you can give this to me, I will get copied and put into the record. Uh, okay, start here. Who would like to? Comment. Anyone? You can see uh, if you uh, name and address. If you, stand, you don't stand up if you don't want, but name and address. Bill Corza, 28 State Road. I was just wondering what sparked the the split tax rate decision. Uh, is the town need, are we under a shortfall for income as far as taxes? I'm just wondering what sparked this all of a sudden. The, the split vote. This decision is made every year. Yep. So it's not nothing triggered it aside from state law that says we have to consider it every year. And it's not and, a decision yet, it's simply a discussion. Right. Right now it's a discussion. And ultimately it has no impact at all on the total amount of money raised by the town. It's just <clears> a question <throat> of where it is raised from. The total tax levy is the same whether we have a split tax rate or a single tax rate. So the amount of money we need is the amount of money we need. It's just a question of where it's going to be coming from. It's a question that the uh, select board revisits right. on an but, annual basis. But there's so nothing in particular that triggered this aside from state law that says every year we have to make this decision. Do we have a number on how many businesses it would affect today? Uh, well, Brian gave the numbers of how many businesses there are. There are 50 commercial properties, 15 industrial properties, and 49 uh entities that have personal property there are if brian didn't give the number but according to calculation there are roughly 700 residential properties now how many of those properties would be on route five and ten or 116 uh which are state state roads which have basically no impact as far as the town supplying a service for commercial properties I I don't have a breakdown of that, but there's also a question of how what is the relative amount of value of property on State Road uh, as opposed to other end. The two largest or three of the largest properties in town, or the three largest, are not on any of those roads. It's no. Yan Yankee Candle, Covestro, and the Berkshire Gas installation. Is it correct that? It is assessed by your square footage of your building and your it, the, the that, that's for the, the the assessors i don't know what the assessment uh criteria are that's the board of assessors job well my my, my point is is that most commercial properties are already much larger than your average residential property yes with absolutely no one impacting the school system i'm wondering what the impact is on the town from the commercial properties that you would look to get more money out of them, besides the fact that you're saying they're worth more money. Shifting the tax burden. Shifting the tax burden onto those that are not putting the expenses on the town. Well, we'll, we'll, let's, we'll, let's, we'll, let's hear the comment rather than get into the back and forth now. Let's hear the comments and We'll try to address those issues because I think we will, the members of the board will have our own comments about yeah. what we what, what I'm hearing though, what um, Mr. Kors is trying to say, it seems like he's saying, well, 
you know, if a business expands, it's not putting more children in the schools. It's not using more town services that we have to provide. So I just want to let them know, I hear you on that, that that's, uh, that's exactly the kind of thing we need to hear from people. And, and I thank you for coming in to, to, to point that out. Yeah. Any other comments, you know, Paul? Okay, I'm Paul Antea, 50 Weber Road. Um, I am a member of the Finance Committee. I am not speaking for the Finance Committee. I'm speaking for myself as a citizen, resident, taxpayer. Um, we have had a single rate tax in this town for as long as I can remember and anybody alive can remember. And when I compare our tax rates to those of our neighbors, we are in a very favorable position and have been over time. So it's obvious that the equilibrium that we exist in between residential and commercial properties is working. Um, I'm not aware of any kind of monetary shortfall that we have to make up um, to try to draw more dollars from the commercial side. And I think as people and as neighbors, we have to live together in this town and the commercial side of our life pays for everything. And if we tax, they're not gonna pay more. They're just gonna pass it on to add to the, to what we have across the entire country, which is an inflation rate that is the worst we've seen in 40 years. And that's what adds to it. Those kind of decisions that drive, that try to pull taxes out of hardworking people and government that doesn't try to grow the pie, but try to continue to take a larger slice of that pie has to really, I think, take a hard look at what they're doing. I'll say no more. And, yes. Robert Klinger, uh, town resident, 16 Dickinson Hill Road. I also own 10 Sandy Lane right next door. I just want to agree with everything else that I've heard this evening from JDR Builders through everyone here. I do not agree with a split tax rate. I think it's going to hurt the town. I think the people that come to work in all the different buildings, we're not sending kids to schools, but then they're stopping at muffins, they're stopping at the truck stop, they're stopping at different places getting gas. They're working here. So that's all. I don't agree with it. I agree with what everybody else feels. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here? Yeah. Throw in. I'm Skip Goodridge, uh, Underground Supply 82 State Road. I'm also a resident, 113 Chestnut Plain Road. I benefit either way. Um, I think the town wants to encourage business growth. Uh, business growth generates revenue without generating expenses for the town. Uh, I go along with Paul. Uh, inflation's a killer. Agreed. Anybody else? Dennis Modali, uh, 45 State Road, LNL Pants. Um, I agree with it all as well. Um, I'll throw in pandemic, uh, lack of ability to hire help, um, and uh, whatever this inflation is going to do to business. Uh, just add that to the mix. I think that is a good idea. Yep, Gary Clark, Tom <clears throat> uh, Um Basic uh, cost of goods skyrocket and can't increase prices, keep up with it. So just doing the best we can to pay bills as it is right now. So I agree with all the other good people. And I'm a resident. Okay. Do we have anyone on Zoom? I stuff. I can't. I don't see anything. I don't see any hands. Yeah, I'm also looking, and I don't see 
um, any hands up. Well, let's give it a moment in case somebody's having a hard time getting finding the uh, raise hand icon. Okay, I'm still not seeing any. Uh, so I think the we could close the public comment portion. Anybody who's there, you sure? You don't have anything else to tell us? Well, I'd like to just follow up what Paul and Taya was saying about our tax rates similar to other communities. Uh, yes, that is true. We're within one or two uh, percent uh, dollar value uh, of surrounding communities. So we're, we're in that. In that neighborhood, uh, the the biggest impact if if you go to a, a split tax rate, well, the biggest dollar value input is going to probably be on the, the bigger commercial properties, the bigger properties, and they're the ones that can afford it or the increase. It's the smaller properties in town that can't afford it, and they're the the. Uh, Median price for commercial industrial properties in town is, is similar to the residential. It's in the three to 350, 350,000 assessed value. Uh, them, are, them are the median ones for, for commercial and uh, industrial. Them are the ones that, that are gonna suffer more by an increased tax rate because it affects them more, a more, uh, larger percentage of their of their budgets than a large corporation. Okay. And Thank the final you, comment is, you know, I, I guess I'll uh, express my appreciation for all the, the small businesses that came together in Waitley to help us celebrate the 250th celebration birthday party this past year. There was quite a few businesses, small businesses in town that came to celebrate. They donated money. You know that. All of you know that. That they donated money. They participated. They encouraged community cohesion and, and, and support. And, and I, I think now we shouldn't be punishing them by increasing their taxes more, more than, than residents or, or other people. I, I think. Uh, uh, okay, Fred, I think we understand your position. Okay. And I think we need to move on because it's it's already uh, it's already been an hour here. But I think you, you've made your position clear. Okay. Okay. Joyce, we have a hand raised. Okay. Um, I'm not a, a, I don't think I'm in control. Can you um, uh, let the person speak then? You can go ahead. Hello, my name is Stephen Clock from the Waitley Inn. Hi, Steve. Uh, how are you? So I got to agree with all the businesses as I am a business but I am not a resident. I do own houses in Whateley, um, but I can't understand why you wanna punish or even consider the idea of putting a higher burden on the local businesses. Yeah. Um, oh, just for the record, Stephen, it, it it's not that we have decided one way or another, or we're we just we're asked every year to consider it. We're doing what the state asks us to do every year. There's no decision. There's no hey, we're going to go do this this meeting. Just I it's it seems from some people's comments that people think that that we want a split tax rate, but what we want is a conversation. And I'm really glad you you zoomed in to give us your part of the conversation. So just to clear that up. Okay, I understand. I did hear that earlier, but okay, I just don't understand why it's. Does it have to be brought up by law that you have to? Yes. And we have to have a hearing. Yes, we have to consider it. Yes. Yeah. Business in Whaley. Why didn't I know anything about this meeting? I didn't get any. We, we have this meeting every year. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have to get lucky and figure it out. But no, it's, it's all right, right around the same time of year, late November, early December. And it should be posted on the town website. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks for your input. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, it seems like it's um, probably a good time to close the um, the public hearing at this point, and then we go on to discuss and vote. Um, we'll and everyone is welcome to hearing. stay for that. Um, I will second closing the public hearing. Sorry, Joyce, okay. we were talking over you. <laughs> oh no, that's okay. I'm st I'm moving things around my screen. Um, all right, uh, then all those in favor of closing the public hearing, Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. Okay. All right. So now at this point, um, we can discuss and make a vote. Um, it. Uh, I don't know if we have to do kind of the the four different things separately, but there were some that we just can't do like the open space that should be pretty um pretty easy uh there was uh, two others the residential exemption and the small business exemption where it was not obvious at all but part one in one case the small business um the, the uh, small the small business would be very relevant if there, there are there would be a number five. of businesses that are and, and this sort of, uh, I believe I, we've got a more recent list, I think, of employees. Oh, that, oh okay. That, <laughs> um, okay, because I sort of felt that was one where we don't have the, the a proper information and what information we had was five years old. Something. It was a 2018 list? Yeah, it was not, it was not a recent current list. But yeah, there was a 2018 list, which, okay, four years old. Uh, but it, it was the list of about, I think about 20 businesses that had a tier something. Um, yeah, there was one in, in the email. There was a list of businesses right. two pages long. And right. um, and those ones, I mean, uh, but in the PowerPoint, it, it kind of differed with that, where it said that there were uh, about five businesses, but the, because the information came from the state. You're saying the other list, um, the one that yeah, the, the other, other one. list is more extensive and seems like there'd be more eligible businesses. Oh, okay. So, um, and that one, I think I can find. I, I I can't guarantee that, but it would appear that there are more. Yeah. Here. The um, uh, yeah, the ten or fewer employees. It looked like uh, on the yeah, first. No, this is from 2018. Right, it's from yeah, 2018, yeah. but mm -hmm. that's more than five. There's ten. It's like, it's like about twenty-five. If I yeah, it looks like about 20 to 25. Although, as I understand, they need to have fewer oh. than 10 employees. This, this, is, this would be 10 fewer than 10 employees. This is the fewer than 10 employees and hmm. a total property valuation of one there, million. Or which, which almost, I think all but one or two properties are under a million dollars for commercial property. I misunderstood oh. this. Most of those information there are. There are five commercial properties. If you cross-reference the CIP, the commercial yeah. listing, yeah, with the list, there are five out of the fifty that will qualify for small-scale small commercial exemption. There would be forty-five that would not qualify, and the reason being, I think a lot of the the businesses that are on that list yeah. are home-based businesses, so they 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 would not pay a commercial tax rate anyways. Okay, I, I, okay. It, it may only be five, but I see several here that I know that are on the list of of businesses. So, mm. and part of part of the difficulty in this discussion right now is that we don't have a even 2020, 2021, 2022 no. list of businesses with fewer than ten employees. So, yeah. making yeah. decisions yeah. with old information. Joyce, if, if you'll allow me, I'd like to mm -hmm. say a few words. Uh, that sure. Will, that will undoubtedly not make me popular in the room. I believe we should have a split tax rate <clears throat> because Waitley isn't the same as other towns around here. We've got an unusual situation that we've got a handful of very large properties they represent a disproportionate amount of roughly 30 to 35 percent of our commercial and industrial combined tax rate are in two companies. 
Cavestro, Yankee Candle. I don't think that the management of those companies, Covestro in Germany and Newell Corporation in Atlanta, even know where Waitley is, to tell you the truth. We also have a lot of the properties that are represented here in the commercial, particularly in the industrial and the personal property, are utilities. They're not going anywhere. They're not moving. Solar facilities that are here are not going anywhere. Cell towers that are here are not going anywhere. Berkshire Gas's installation across the street here is not going anywhere. I am incredibly sorry if we adapt this, that the smaller commercial businesses here get caught up in that. I wish there were a way to exempt the small businesses, but I agree with everything that's been said about what the small business added to the community. But I want to represent the 700 plus households that would be getting a tax break from this. No one's mentioned them yet. The average household here would get a 200, $265.72 tax reduction. Businesses have suffered from inflation, businesses have suffered from COVID. So have individuals. The residents have suffered. Restaurants have increased costs in goods and the like. So do homeowners. Homeowners have adjustable rate mortgages that are going up because of the interest rates. They would, 700 of them would benefit from this. And yes, again, I, I sympathize with the businesses. I wish that we could exempt all of you, but we can't. We've got rules that we have to live by. If we do it for one, we have to do it for everybody. The entities that would take the brunt of this are large, corporations that, yes, may contribute something, may contribute to the town. I'm not saying they don't. But I don't, for changing the subject slightly, I don't believe that changing this tax rate would have any impact on commercial businesses coming here or not. And I'll tell you why. Look at the Sugarloaf shops. You've got two cannabis retail places going in there. They have investments well over a million dollars each to go in there. Charging them an extra couple of thousand dollars a year in taxes isn't going to be the reason they come here or they don't come here. They have a much, if they think that's a good place for them to be or for another business to be, they're going to go there because the cost of starting a business anywhere is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the amount that we're talking about for attracting or not attracting new businesses, the amount of the business will look at the amount of taxes. They're not going to look and say, oh, but we're paying more than residents. We're not moving here. I don't think any businesses, any business should do that. That's not a proper consideration. That if we have to pay X in taxes, can we be here or can we not be here? That's that's the consideration. And I don't think, I, I, I've got a list here also of towns in the state that have split tax rates. Roughly a third of the municipalities in the state have a split tax rate. Most of them are in the eastern part of the state and in the suburbs or the, their cities and the suburbs. <laughs> And I dare say that <clears throat> suburban towns in Massachusetts are no less competitive in trying to get commercial business into their towns than we are. If anything, they're more so. We're a residential agricultural town. We're not a retail town. We're not a commercial town. We have those businesses here, but we don't have a downtown that we're trying to attract to. Unlike 
many of the other towns that have split tax rates. I don't think it's hurting, you know, I'm just saying Needham or Salem or Framingham or Burlington and attracting businesses that they have a split tax rate. It may, however, help attract residents. And while business and the commercial sector is a key part of who we are, I think the more important key part of who we are are our residents and our farmers. And if we can do something to help them with increased mortgages or increased costs, or even maybe making their house a little more saleable by reducing their taxes by a little bit and letting you, unfortunately, but Yankee Candle and Covestro and Berkshire Gas and the solar companies pay a little more or a lot more in their cases because they're the ones with the valuable properties. That the Yankee Candle property, which has an assessment of $8 million, the Covestro properties that have assessments of five to $6 million, Berkshire Gas, four million, they're... Next year, when we have to revisit this, yeah. and we really feel the effects of the, what's going on right now, then you're going to have to come out with businesses you demand more money. That's just. And as one of the elements that was brought forth, this is reviewable every year. This this will be back every year. You're know, sending a wonderful message to business that people that stand up and and help you out with your 250th anniversary to people that I run your police department with their with their as I said it, it would be yeah, wonderful it would be wonderful message to us saying screw you for helping us that's what you're saying and that help goes to these 700 households you want to shut that off that's what you're telling us yeah Monaghan with Monaghan Charlie, State Road, also resident for Dickinson Hill. The, the public hearing is closed, but well, whatever. Keep, 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 keep you started your comments off with Covestro being in Germany and Newell Brand yeah. uh, being wherever they are, yeah. Atlanta, not even knowing where Wheatley is. So they can close those facilities in a heartbeat. Now ask how many residents depend on those two companies alone. Residents who live here and work here, so now they're jobless. And you're not a welcoming commercial industry town anyway, as I personally experienced. So yeah. to, to punish those people, and they're the largest employers in our town, and you're going to punish them? Each of those businesses, each of those companies did over $10 billion dollars. That's, that's not, not the point. point. Yeah. No, and, 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 and have tremendous investments in their property. They'll here. walk out of here. They, they are not. They have expenses as well. I know they do, but they are. They they will leave here if they find a place where they can get cheaper labor. An extra five thousand or two thousand or ten thousand or whatever it is in taxes in Waitley. For them, no. That's that's about what it would be. 20,000, whatever the number is, yeah, whatever the is not, is not going to, do you know how much money, I and mean, I don't know the answer to this question, but a lot is the answer. How much money Yankee Candles just put into improvements? Millions. Hey, that, that, company, that, that company was built, I, I knew Mike Kitteridge when I started my business, believe it or not, Mike Kitteridge was dipping candles. Hmm. And his, I'm talking about, recent, I'm talking about recently. And his parents sell them. That company was founded on a lot of blood, sweat, that, and that, That's no fine, and, and it's been no and it's been it. and it's been sold to Newell. So don't pick on business because they are showing some success. It and it's been sold to Newell. Has nothing to do with anyone dipping candles in a basement anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Um, to do who they, they, they are money. now, and they. You've if you've you noticed money. all the utility poles that have gotten changed on Christian Lane recently. Yeah. That's at the request of Yankee Candle because they're operating their facility here. It's that thinking, though, that but, trickle down that nobody thinks about that is making the, the 
the inflation rate what it is. And I agree and I understand, but the trick I'm trying to help the people that it's trickling down on. The people who are paying the 700 residents households they're, they're here spend more than 265 in their goods and services when they go to get them locally. That's fine, but we can't help them. So uh, well, we, 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 we can't help them in some way, but we can. Yeah, um, this is kind of uh, getting a little. Can I break so in here? Because please? they are paying a disproportionate amount of the right. So you keep you keep mm -hmm. talking about four big companies in town. Yankee Candle makes so many billion dollars. Well, you're going to take those four companies and punish the other fifty because there's a couple that make some real big dough. What is what is the next income of Muffins Market? I don't make no billion dollars. Why am I getting thrown in with the guys that you're trying to say make so Because much the state said you have to be thrown in. I, as I've said several times, I wish you were not being thrown into this. So, no, no, yeah, no, can, no, um, I'd like to kind of. I'm, I'm trying to find a way to get the, much money from outside the town in to help. Oh, yeah. yeah. Commercial real estate. Yeah. yeah. I think that's that's a a right. Oh, Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Can we get back to the? Uh, I mean, our agenda at this point. The we had the the public hearing already. Uh, at this point. It's really only at my discretion to get more input from those. This is supposed to be a discussion among the selectmen. And I, I just want to reiterate that we we have heard you. And uh, and I, 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 but one of the things specifically I'm hearing is that um, you feel like this is a punishment, that this is a group that is looking to punish somebody. And we're actually just trying to find a rational way to make a decision. So uh, our discussion, I, I'd like to keep it among us for the moment, and I don't mean this with any disrespect to anyone who's there to hear it, but just be assured that we have heard what you have to say, and Fred is giving his opinion now. Don't take it as the board's opinion at this point, um, and just you know, let him say what he has to say. Joyce, I'm sorry, there were, there were people who wanted, I want to make sure everyone still Yeah, I know in general we do. We do want to have as people who have as possible, but, earlier, but it, it seemed to be right. getting into a, a, an argument and um, I just wanted to keep us on track. Okay, uh, I am essentially done. It's, it's it. I think it's the right thing to do. I wish we had some rep that I would that I didn't have to be the representative of the residents, but there there's no other re representative speaking on behalf of residents who aren't business owners here. And this gentleman should have been what this gentleman should have been they could have they could have come. I I know they could have been, but they still deserve representation. That's it. You're correct, Paul. It's, a resident who is not a business owner. But there are an awful lot of residents here who are on fixed incomes or limited in incomes. We all are in business also. I, we all, we I, can't get our products. I'm, we and, don't have the help. People don't want to pay yeah. it. Okay. Um, all, Julie, yeah. do you have anything you'd like to add to the discussion? Um, I would really like to have gone into this meeting with even more information than we had. I would have liked to have uh, an updated list of companies that had 10 employees or fewer and um, a, a list of uh, an updated list of companies that were valued at 1 million or less so I could make an appropriate determination about which how many small businesses were going to be hurt if we split the tax rate. I am typically of the opinion that larger companies that can carry uh, carry a little bit more of a financial burden and perhaps give back to the communities that they are uh, located in, it would be good if they could pay back in, in terms of a higher tax rate. However, in this particular situation, I don't see 
that the town has enough of a weight of large companies to balance out the small companies that would be hurt by it. I'm basically, I'm basing that on a lot of facts and figures that are flying around in which I can't actually nail down. And I'm sorry that I can't nail it down. I'd really like to be able to. Um, so next year, I'd like to go into this with a lot more information, but I personally at the moment am in favor of keeping the single tax rate and investigating the situation further so that we're not uh, scrambling with conflicting information. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I uh, I have to be honest with you, Julie, last year, I felt exactly the same way that I felt like I didn't quite have uh, enough information. And we have had, um, I'm sorry to say this, very little cooperation from the assessors on this. We asked them to make, uh, uh, ask the state for a report on companies with 10 or fewer employees, and they have not done that. They have not made that request. And it's not something that we're allowed to make. The assessors have to make that request. Um, uh, I, I, I agree I, that we need this information. The folks who uh, are in the position to get it for us seem to not think we need that information. And I don't know really how to make them do it. That's maybe a different topic, not really a topic of this hearing. But I hear your frustration about uh having good information um you know we had conflicting uh, information on what uh percentage uh increase on assessed values were in uh, residential and commercial and i you know i i don't really have uh the, the one i've heard more consistently is the first one that uh last year in particular because of COVID because of how it affected real estate prices, that properties that people lived in for a long time, their values went up because the real estate market was doing those crazy things. Um, and that shifted the burden to residents last year. Um, and so I, I but I, I, boy, I agree on the, we need better information. Um, but I guess the other thing is we need a plan to get it because last year we've I certainly felt the same way, and I wanted mm -hmm. more information. I wanted a list that was sooner, you know, some more recent than 2018. And now we're looking at the same list from 2018. And as it turns out, if that list contains home um, home based businesses that are in residential areas, they're not even uh, affected by this. So um, I think the I think the other caveat on the that list of um, the uh, the statistic that five of the 50 were under uh, 1 million. There was something also about sole yeah, proprietorship businesses. So that number might actually be higher. I would really love better information and I'm not sure. Um, I mean, we might have to start now to get it in time for next year. Um, but this is, I mean, this is clearly something where you know we, we could have unintended consequences and mm -hmm. if you change and then something bad happens then and you know people are very upset if you don't change and the remaining bad situation continues people are not that upset because that's what they're used to anyway <laughs> so uh, in a way that's that's kind of the place where we're stuck um can i ask fred a question Fred Orlowski. You're still there, Fred? I yeah, see him. He's still there, but mute. He's muted. Okay, sure. Um, I'm not sure what kind of information the select board is allowed to see from the assessors. There was something that you were referencing, and I'm sorry, I wish I had taken better notes while you were referencing it. Um, there were a number of facts and figures and uh, information about residences versus uh, businesses in the town that I had, have not seen and would love to be able to see to actually make an informed decision. How can we get that kind of information? Are we privy to it at all? 
yes, you're you're privy to whatever information the, the assessors has. That's that's public information. And what I was quoting some of the 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 data and the analysis that occurred last year when we had this uh, had this discussion. Uh, I didn't see any of that going on right now until this meeting. Uh, last year we had advance notice. The assessors had advance notice of, of what was going to be discussed, uh, and we weighed in, we commented, and we went back and forth. But there was a group of three or four of us discussing it, and we come up with some data, some some facts based on assessors' data. Uh, this year I didn't see any of that until this meeting right here, and so I'm going back to, to what was presented last year. The the, uh, the LA4 I'm talking about is a public record. It's from the DOR site that talks about the, the values of different property classes. That's Anybody can look at that and see it from one year to the next. But yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to share whatever you want. Yeah, yeah I think, Thank yeah, because yeah. last year, I think we had the small committee to uh, look yeah, into working, yeah, the working, the working group. group. Um, and uh, it might take a working group to to do this again, do we want to form perhaps a working group so that we actually have the information we need? Um, this, this, we have this meeting every year. Yeah. This, oh, this yes. Is, so we. So we can. Be, so yeah. So we can. Well, at least it, it. It might be that the only thing that happens is Julie and I feel better about the information we're basing a decision on. That could be. Yeah. And and and. I'm well, of course, happy for more information as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I. Yeah. So that's. Um, okay. No, I, no problem. We'll we'll work with you. Whatever information you want, we'll help you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So maybe we'll put that on um, an agenda for a future meeting to uh, maybe reactivate the uh, working group. Um, maybe put some new people on it and see about getting the kinds of information that we would really like to be able to back up uh, a good, I mean, a good decision has got to be backed up by good information. And. Well, Joyce, one thing, Andrew Candles just recently shut down a factory in West Virginia because of um, another tax burden. But I don't know, you might want to look into that. That's okay, send, that? yeah. send us a link to the information, please. The Yankee Candle has to shut down something in West Virginia. Okay. All right. That would be good information to uh, to also have. Okay. So, Joyce, yeah. my, my thought at this point is that we do one of two things. We either vote or we table this until we have more information and then vote. Right. What's our time table on this? Right. I think we have a timeline that won't really accommodate that. We have to decide probably sooner than we can get the kind of information that would help mm -hmm. us. So I, so I think the information in time for next year's hearing might be a reasonable thing to do, but I don't I I don't think our we'll have the information to make a better decision uh, say at our next meeting a week from now. Okay. I, I mean, I I think the only information that in theory, you might get is an updated list of the the, the businesses with, with ten or fewer employees, maybe. Um, in terms of the other information, I'm not sure what else we could get more certainty on. Um, the list is the, the one that we're going to get from the state in terms of you know uh, sole proprietorships or partnerships. Um, I guess a group could ask, try to estimate after looking at sort of the listing of, of CIP properties, which ones might qualify. Um, those are a little bit harder. Those are at the discretion of the Board of Assessors. Um, but I guess you can get an estimate as to what those may be. Um, yeah. In terms of, yeah, in terms of the, the split versus single tax rate. Um, I'm not sure what other information the Board of Assessors could provide. Um, it's sort of a, a, you know, we have the options table. It shows the different options and stuff like that. But 
Um, if we could think about, you know, what other information specifically you might want, that would definitely be helpful going mm -hmm. forward. Um, yeah. I would say for me in an ideal world, I would split the tax rate and ask the larger companies to pay a little bit more and ease the burden on the residents and have a small commercial exemption. Since it seems that a great, a great number of our small businesses would not be eligible for the exemption, right. that doesn't seem to be something that would be helpful to our town. No. It's, it's a very rigid setup that the state has. Yeah. It's, it's either you meet the criteria or you don't. Yeah. And yeah. municipalities can't do anything in between. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that probably that $1 million, <laughs> that probably was set in, I don't know, 1990-something. Um, <laughs> it it might have been that more business. I mean, that was not indexed to inflation, right? It hadn't been going up at 3% a year the way everything else. My, my, my guess here is that the 10 employee threshold is more of the problem than the million dollar valuation. That could be so. Oh, we okay. don't have that many properties that are valued over a oh, million dollars. I thought the five out of 50 was the $1 million valuation. No, the, it, that, that was the one that meets that. The five out of 50 is those companies that meet both requirements. Both. Both. Right. And I think there are four properties on that list that were $1 million or over. Yeah, there, there are not oh, many. Okay. Oh. Yeah, commercial. So do we? Okay. Well, I think we have to make a motion. Um, make a motion that we take a vote about uh, <laughs> the correct the correct wording to uh, set this year's tax classification. Is that the correct choice? Well, you'd have to say what it, if, if you're proposing if you're moving a single tax rate. Oh, or, I have to with say the book your, that I have had. Joyce, it, right. Or if you're moving a split we, We've heard my opinion. We've heard uh, Julia. Julia's <laughs> opinion. We might need to get the resolution from you and we'll see who seconds it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to say, I feel very much like I did at this time last year. Um, which is I'm I'm disappointed in the information that's at my disposal, and I'm disappointed with the choices that we have. I really feel like the state. This is another example of the state kind of tying our hands and not really letting us do um, what we might think is better for us at the local level. Um, and I know getting the. <laughs> Uh, getting the state legislature to do something is a really big task, um, but maybe we need to uh, maybe we need to to work on that as well um, and lobby our our legislative um, representatives to to help us out with this. Um, give us a, little, a few more options. Um, I am kind of I'm. Maybe it's unfair, but I'm disappointed with our assessors that um, they've been very resistive to giving us clear information um, and uh, been just kind of very reactive and, you know, possibly violating public meeting laws. <laughs> um, that's, you know, so so I, I, I do feel that. I think given all of that, um, I would move that we uh, do not try for either residential or small business exemptions. We can't do the open space and keep the tax rate uniform at this point. I guess that would be the motion. And I'll then with the idea that well, I want to get better information next year and more cooperation from the assessors. Okay, so movement uh, motion has been made and seconded. And we need a roll call vote because the meeting is uh, partially on Zoom. So um, 
uh, let's say, uh, run around with uh, those in favor. Uh, Fred? No. Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. And um, all right, so that is the vote. Brian, do you need us to vote on anything else tonight? Uh, nope, just to confirm, um, the board voted for uh, to keep a single tax rate with no open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And um, then maybe on a future meeting agenda, we can talk about um, what's a, a good way to maybe get the kind of information we were lacking here and talk about what kind of information would be really helpful in making this kind of decision in the future. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, are there I any- I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Me? Yes. Thanks, everybody, and thank you all for coming, the people who came on Zoom, the people who came in person. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.